Good morning to you, brothers and sisters. We want to thank God for giving us this opportunity that we come together and worship him. Uh, let us pray. Lord our God, you have known us from before we were born. We come to lay our lives before you now. We come as a family in this place to hear you speak to us. Lead us on, call us to the place where you want us to be. Stretch out your hand and touch our mouths that we might praise you and speak for you through Jesus our Redeemer. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Ben to come and do the reading of the word through the book of uh, the prophet Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 1 to 10. Good morning and praise God. I thank the Lord for every single one of you today and pray that you're blessed and your eyes are focused on the Lord. As Johnson mentioned, we'll be reading Jeremiah 1, 1 to 10, and it talks about when Jeremiah was called to his ministry. And there's a lot of names, so bear with me. <laughs> the words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, one of the priests of Anathoth, in the territory of Benjamin, the word of the Lord came to him in the thirteenth year of the reign of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah, and through the reign of Jerichoam, the son of Jos Josiah, king of Judah, down to the fifth month of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah, when the people of J Jerusalem went into exile. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I, everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I will be with you and you will re and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow to build and to plant this is the word of the lord this week uh, based on the verse it's going to be a great sermon by johnson so come and hear what the lord's put on his heart thank you johnson thank you so much uh, brother ben for the reading of the word of god uh, my theme this morning is called for a purpose called for a purpose. We modern day Christians are not called to be prophets in the Old Testament sense of the term. We must remember that when preaching from this text, an Israelite prophet was one who had the ecstatic experience of standing in the council, the heavenly court of the Lord, to perceive and to hear his word. You will read that uh, like Jeremiah 23 verse 18 says, But which of them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see or to hear his word, who has listened and heard his word? So he was then sent as a messenger of that counsel to tell where, when, and why God was at work in Israel's life. Old Testament prophets had new words from the Lord to proclaim. But we Christians believe that the word of God has now been spoken and incarnated in his fullness in Jesus Christ. We add nothing to the word of God. Who can add anything to the cross of the resurrection? Rather, we simply spell out, expound, and explain the meaning of that full word for our time. Nevertheless, the God who called the youthful Jeremiah of Judah in 626 B.C., is also our God, and the revelation given in this text to the prophet at the beginning of his ministry can also be a witness to us of God's nature and purpose. 
Certainly, the text centers on God. Six times the word Lord appears in this text. Who is the God who revealed through this call? First, he's God of intimacy. There are no angelic mediators here, nor is Jeremiah overwhelmed with the vision of God's transcendent glory, as was Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6. Rather, God himself fashioned Jeremiah in his mother's womb like a porter waking with the lamp of clay in verse 5. As he has fashioned each one of us, he knows Jeremiah and us through and through, like in uh, Psalms 133, where we can listen uh, from Psalms 133 when he says, O oh Lord, you have saved me and you know me. You know me when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going and my out and my lying down. Which means God knows you in everything. Similar, God himself reaches out his hand and touches the prophet's lips and puts his word in his mouth. In verse 9, I am glad that Jeremiah's mother did not practice abortion. He would never have been born. Many people today are asking, when a child is a child, I may say to you, a child is a child at the very conception, at the very moment he is conceived. In Psalms 139, David says, My substance was not hid from thee. When I was in secret and curiosity, wrought in lowest parts of the earth. You can see something here which is being said. He said, My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, which means there was nothing hidden from God. God knows everything. That is, he was formed in the womb of his mother. And at that moment, life began. I'm told by a gynecologist that there is a tremendous development in the fetus at the very beginning. Abortion is murder. Unless it is done to save a life. So that is the way the word of God looks at it. God said to Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you and I called you. I knew you and I called you. Second, the God who calls Jeremiah is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Jeremiah is called to be a prophet to nations and kingdoms and is called to establish and build up those nations or plug them up and break them down in verse 10. That is what he's told to do. Like Jesus passing majestically through the midst of the crowd in gospel, lesson of Luke 10, uh, 4, verse 21 to 30. Jeremiah is the almighty sovereign in control. He, is, he sees God. God in, the, in Jeremiah is the almighty sovereign. He is in control of everything. Thus, Jeremiah calls God Adonai. What does that mean? Master or owner. Meaning that he is saying, that is my master. He is my master. He is my owner. He knows everything about me. And that is what Jeremiah is saying. This mighty Lord calls an insignificant youth from the Benjamite tribe of Anatod to be his messenger. Jeremiah at the time of this call is a young man of marriageable age, about 18 years of old, and there's nothing about his that qualifies him to be the Lord's prophet. He has never spoken in public in his life. Indeed, throughout his ministry, he's terrified by his task and argues constantly against it. The God of the scriptures, it seems, calls those who are weak and foolish, despised in the world. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. In order that it may be seen that it is God's power that works through them and not their own. So God calls the weak, those who are insignificant, those who feel they cannot do it. That is, those are the people God calls. When you feel that you are able, you are, you are good enough, please, Think about it. That's not God's call. God always equips his ministers and messengers and disciples for their task. However, providing this sufficiency where they have none. To Jeremiah, he says, I do not know. The Lord replies, I knew you. Can you see that? To Jeremiah, I am only a youth. God answers, I will be with you. And then he gives Jeremiah the word he is to speak. As Paul says, God's grace is sufficient for us 
And his power is made perfect in our weakness in First Corinthians chapter, uh, Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verse nine, showing that God is always there. The reason for God's call to Jeremiah and to us is very clear. God is working constantly to make His creation good once again. We human beings ruin God's world with our sin and rebellion against His will, attempting to be our own deities to fashion our own future. We now try to become our own gods. That's why we, the world is no longer what it's supposed to be. It is created for harmony and peace. But because we want to be in authority, we want to be in charge, we are changing what God has created the world to be. The result is strife between male and female, male and female, between mother and daughter, between brother and brother, between nations which... God's creation marred by thorns and thistles. The God-given gifts of beauty and work turned into ugliness and treasure. All community becomes impossible. Over it, all the sentence of death. You can see that this is what is happening, even from the book of Genesis chapter 3 to 11. Now God works tirelessly to turn our case existence into a blessing and to give to all humanity the gift of abundant life. In a community of justice, love, and peace, that knows how to live for the Lord. God has called us to be that. God lays his plans for the salvation of this world. Very careful. He tells Jeremiah, before I formed you, before you were born, before the prophet was ever conceived in the womb, God knew his task for Jeremiah. Consecrated him, sanctified him, that is set apart to be his prophet. So that he set apart to do the work of God. I have saved you. Lord, you know me in Psalms 139 verse 1 to 6. You know when I sit and when I arise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before I went is on my tongue, you already knew it completely. You hem me in behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me to understand. Too wonderful, too loved for me to attain. Psalms 139, which is David saying, In like manner, God knew and planned each one of us to have a special role in this purpose. So you have been called for a purpose. You have been created for a purpose. God does not create human beings simply for nothing, to fill the earth. No! You have been created for a purpose. For each of us, he has a purpose before we ever met us. He has got a purpose for each one of us. He, God equips Jeremiah for instance by putting his words in Jeremiah's mouth. In verse 9. In other words, Jeremiah's prophet is not the result of his own thought. He has not wondered the state of the society and read the signs of the time and decided that he simply must speak out against these people. No. No, has he prophesied been the result of his own religious zealous indignation or even love for his people? Even though he loves his people, dear, no, Jeremiah's prophetic proclamation are words from the Lord, given to him as gifts from God. His prophecies come from God alone. And when Jeremiah tries to say something different, God rebukes him sternly in Jeremiah 15 verse 19. So in the same manner, our tasks done for the Lord are made possible by gifts given to us. In the epistle lesson of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the faith, hope, and love that Christians are to manifest in their lives are not products of their own thought and work, but are gifts of the Spirit. As Paul makes it very clear, apart from God's equipment of us, we cannot do anything. We can't do anything. Apart from God, we can't do anything. So the task given to Jeremiah is fearful. He is not only to build and to plant, not only to comfort and give people hope, which he does after the fall of Jerusalem to the Babylonians in 587 BC. Jeremiah chapter 30 and 31 are often called the book of comfort. Because he's comforting the people. Jeremiah is also to pluck up and to break down. In verse 10. 
to utter those powerful active ways of judgment that will af wake, affect the effect of uh, Judah's life until they bring out the nation's downfall. The concept of the word of God in the Bible is that it acts in human life to bring about that which God speaks. When God says something, it has to happen in people, not somewhere else. It has to happen. So God tells Jeremiah that he has been appointed, his spokesperson, to express to his society their spiritual downward plunge into the abyss of destruction. God says that Israel will be uprooted. It will be torn down, destroyed, and overthrown. You can hear that message. I feel very comfortable as I prepare these messages. I am not pulling any punches. I am giving the word of God just as it is. That's my responsibility. I say this kindly. I am not responsible to you. I am responsible to God. So if I don't preach the message I am supposed to preach, I am answerable to God, not to people. I turn my report to, to him. It is just too bad for if what I say does not please people. I'm sorry, I wish it did. I know if you are not pleased with what I'm saying, you may be angry about me, but I'm, that's not my intention. Because I'm not here to please people, but to please God. Today, society parallels that of ancient Israel in Jeremiah's times. Morals and actions, philosophies are also anti Christian that it calls for men and women to stand up and cry out against them. The reason God tells Jeremiah there must be this uprooting is to rebuild and replant a godly society. You can't do that without following what God is asking. So the reason for the judgment of God in Judah's life and in ours is clear. God cannot give us new life without first reading us off the old life. New wine cannot be put into old wineskin, nor the new page sewn on an old garment in Matthew 9, verse 16 and 17. We cannot lead Christian lives while preserving our old habits of sin. We cannot be effective when we still hang on to our old things. God uses judgments on us daily to rid us of all these evil ways in order that he makes us new creatures. In Jesus Christ. He will not leave us alone in, uh, in our evil. Because he loves us. Does not want us to die the death. That our sin deserves. Rather he constantly works us to rid us of evil. In order that he may give us. A life that is good. It is not surprising. That Jeremiah is told. He will meet opposition. In fact in Jeremiah uh, chapter 1. Verse 18 and 19. He tells us that in all Judah. will fight against the prophet. They will put him in prison because the Judean do not hear any more than we like to hear that they are in wrong. Even today, a lot of people don't want to hear that they are doing wrong things. Christians in our day meet opposition too. It is not easy to be a good person in our society in which goodness is out of fashion. When you say you are doing good things, people look at you and say, what are you talking about? It's no longer something that people look forward. But you know, in every church, there was a little group of dissidents, Kantankarias, troublemakers, who are not always honest, who don't want to repent. However, if you are giving out the word of God, you are responsible to God. And set aside for that ministry. Fear not their faces. You don't need to fear the faces of the people in the congregation because you are touching the things they live upon. You, because you are only responsible to God. So fear not their faces. Say what the word of God is saying. Divorce is rampant in our day as adultery and abortion, cheating and lying, selfishness and pride. Anyone who lives by God's word these days meets sneakers and scorn and sometimes persecution. They are nays, squares and worse of all, irrelevant. That's what they say. It's irrelevant to them. But Jeremiah is given the promise of God that is given us all, to us all. Be not be afraid of them, says the Lord, for I am with you to deliver you. In the midst of every trial that confronts a Christian who tries to live in faith, hope and love, God is present with his own strength and guiding treasure. That is, this is the way and the truth and abandon. 
So in conclusion, what is it that God is calling you to do? That's my question. Again, if you want to know what God expects of your, of you, of your tomorrow, look at what God has done with your past. God grant us eyes to see how we have been prepared, ears to hear the task, what is proposed, and then the faith to realize that God will preserve us for the completion of that task. May God give each one of us a little of Jeremiah, knowing the purpose of which you are called to. I have called you before you were conceived in your mother's womb. That is what God is saying to us. Are you living to the purpose or to the call of God? May God bless you as you try to meditate, to contemplate upon these ways and find your place in the purpose to which God has called you. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we know you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. For the people who have helped us on our way, patiently guiding and training us throughout our childhood, helping us to follow you. For the church family here who helped and support us, enabling us to know your love. For everyone here, however they save, from the young to the old, we ask that you continue to look after us. For all that we and to whom we have given and from whom we receive love and affection, for the joy, hope, and confidence they bring to us. Lord, we want to thank you. Oh, Lord, our God, our praise shall always be before you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it is time to give our thanksgiving. We give because we realize that he is the God who knows us before we were born. He has given us talents, gifts, and everything that we have. So we have what we have because God has given us. So we are just saying, thank you, Lord, for what you have given us. Let us bring our offerings, our tithe to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for everything that you have given us. For you have known us before we were born. Thank you that we are here because of you. May you continue, Lord, to bless us. Bless these offerings so that they can be used for the proclamation of your word. Thank you, Lord. Bless every one of us. Bless everyone who has even thought of contributing something and say, thank you, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Let us receive grace. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We thank you for everything that you have done. We thank you for the life you have given us. We bring your lives and ask you to fill us with your love. Your love for us is so complete that nothing we can do make you love us more. And nothing we can make, nothing we can do can make you love us less. We are confident of your love for us. So take us as we are and use us to take your love to the people we meet. Glory be to God through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen, amen.